In this video, I'm going to share with you six reasons why you keep attracting narcissists. Now, if you stick around to number one, this is going to be something that you probably have never heard of before. Okay, but first, let's roll it. and Janito, and I'm a spiritual empowerment teacher and master healer. I'm also an intuitive psychic medium, and on this channel, you are going to learn how to heal your codependency through spirituality. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with a little bell notification to get notified of when I have new videos coming out every single week. So let's go ahead and get into this now. So the first five things that I'm going to share with you, you've probably heard it before. But the last thing that I have for you is really the issue of attracting narcissists. But let's go ahead and just share these with you just so that if you haven't heard them, I can give them to you now, okay? So the first one is gonna be, you might keep attracting narcissistic people into your life. And this doesn't even have to be just romantic relationships. It can be friendships. Um, I never knew that when I, was, when I was healing and everything that friends could be narcissists as well. So you really have to kind of reflect on all of your relationships in your life with this, right? But number one is gonna be that you trust too easily. You trust people for what they say, you're not skeptical at all, um, and you just kind of open your heart too fast and just allow everybody in, okay? So you wanna start to be a little bit more trusting. The second thing here is gonna be you're an over giver. Now let me share why these things um, are common in attracting narcissists. Narcissists are manipulators. And they know and they can read not just energy, but your signals and your um, conversations. And they will test you in the beginning. And if you're an overgiver, they're going to ask for things and you're going to give. And when they see that, it's like for the codependents, it's like the red flag in the relationship that we just ignore. It's the same thing with, with narcissists. A red flag for them in a relationship would be if they ask for something and somebody doesn't give it, that's going to be a red flag that they need to move on to somebody else that's going to give them what they want. So number five here is overgiving. Now, if you start really in the very beginning of a relationship and you're just overgiving and overgiving, maybe you're buying them things, maybe you're taking them places, maybe you're traveling and paying for things, like they are going to be like, ooh, right? So you're just overgiving. And it doesn't even have to be materialistic stuff. It could be like you're overgiving your time. Um, you might, they might move in with you really quick. Like you're just overgiving. And they will see that and they will want that because now they know that you're going to be the type of person that is going to give them what they want, right? So overgiving, got to stop that. Um, people pleasing, kind of the same thing. Now, people pleasing is more about not saying no when you really want to say no, Give, like doing everything that they want you to do, or even just kind of doing it on your own, where you don't even know that you're doing it. You're just kind of pleasing them. If they ask you to go somewhere, you feel bad saying no, or you feel guilty. So you go. So definitely people pleasing. Again, if they ask you and um, you do it, and you don't want to do it, then they know that they have you. Like, even if you give them a little bit of kickback, but then you say, okay, yeah, sure. Like now they know that they have you. So you have to be really careful with the overgiving and the people pleasing. Now, the next thing is going to be that you have no boundaries. Um, they will push you. They will push you to the extent of getting out of those boundaries. Um, especially, you know, when it comes to doing things for them, um, sex as well, they might push you real fast. Uh, so they will definitely push you. And if you don't have strong boundaries, they're going to get to you and they're, they're going to know that. And they're going to know that just if they push just a little bit, that you're going to give in and do whatever they want, or you're going to take down whatever boundary that you said. Now, let me just give you a couple of examples of this. So this could be, so um, say like you don't want to move too fast in a relationship, you know, you're codependent and you're healing and like, you don't want to move too fast. Now, remember they don't know that they're narcissists. So they're not wondering like, oh my gosh, do they know that I'm a narcissist? So they're not, they're not um, expecting you to kind of like test them or anything, but they are testing you. So they might um, 
you know, if, if you put down, like, I don't want to move too fast, they'll be like, oh, sure, sure, sure. Then no problem. But then all of a sudden, two weeks later, it's like they're moving in with you because they might say that they respect your boundaries, but then their actions are different. And you really have to be careful with that with narcissistic people. Okay. So you have no boundaries. Therefore, the narcissist sees that and they know that they can manipulate you. They know that they can push you. And then of course, getting what they want because the narcissist is all about them and what they need and what they want. So they want to find the people that are going to be able to do that for them. And they know who that is. Somebody, just to give you an example, um, I had dated someone right after my marriage broke up and I had no boundaries. I was a people pleaser. I was an overgiver, everything. Um, I would drive hours, hours, hours for this person, right? Driving him back and forth because he had no license. So at this point it was, yeah, total overgiver. He shows up like a year later when I've healed and my boundaries were firm. Never heard from him again. Okay. They know, they know when it is someone that they can manipulate and they know when it's someone that they can't. So having these are really important. Okay. Now, the other, the other way that uh, you keep attracting narcissists is that you're desperate for love and you ignore those red flags because you want love so bad. Let me know in the comments if these are resonating and the next one I have you is going to blow your mind. So, but when you're desperate for love, you're going to accept any little crumbs that come in that make you feel good and make you feel that love feeling that you're looking for. So we really have to get you to a place that you don't feel like you need love. You want love, but it's not the main priority in your life because your life is so great. And that's where I love to get my clients to is where they're loving their life, living on their own, that they are ready now to attract a relationship, but it's going to be healthy because they don't need it. They want it to fulfill their life and bring more joy, but they don't need it because they already have that joy in their life. So really kind of reflect on yourself to, to ask yourself, like, do I feel needy of love? Like, am I quote unquote desperate, which I don't like to use that word, but that's really what it is when you're in that desperate state. And it's like, oh, what are they going to get here? And I can't wait. And like, you know, and you're, you're on online dating sites all of the time. And you're just trying to find that one person or, or anybody really. Um, that's when they're going to, that's when you're going to attract those people, because again, they're going to be testing you. And if you're in that desperation, you're going to accept not every, not everybody, you know what I mean? Like, I know that if you might be desperate for love, but like, there's some people that you're going to be like, no, thank you. But when you're desperate for love, you might accept the people you might settle, I guess is the word I want to use settle. You might settle for the people that aren't at your top uh, um, requirements, I guess I would say, of what you're trying to manifest into your life. So definitely reflecting on yourself and asking yourself, like, do you feel desperate for love? Do you feel that neediness for love? And if that's the answer, then there's definitely healing that needs to happen. And this is why I would recommend to like the women I work with, like, do not date. Like after you get out of a toxic relationship, this is your time. It's time for you. And I'm going to do another video on the three stages of healing codependency. So check that out. Definitely check out to see how needy you feel for love. All right. Uh, let me know if these are resonating with you down in the comments below. And our last one, our main one, and this is really, really the top reason. Um, you can do all these other things, but if you don't fix what I'm about to say, it's, you're going to keep attracting them. And this is about healing the energy because when you're attracting, so this is what I deal with, with my clients, they will say, Danielle, I know that I deserve a healthy relationship. So why do I keep attracting toxic relationships or narcissistic people into my life? Why do I keep doing that? How is that happening? I don't understand. I've worked on my mind. Um, I know all this stuff. I have boundaries, blah, 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 all these different things that they have worked on and healed. But the thing is, is that it's not only our mind and our body, it is our energy that attracts energy, okay? Our energy attracts the same vibration. So if you have completely healed, right, you can start setting different boundaries. You can do that. You can stop giving to people, right? You can stop that. Now, what I find is when that type of person that has done that type of healing, where they have set boundaries, they don't give there's a little bit of resentment that comes with that because they're so angry at um, people taking so much all of the time. 
And that's never good. That's never good. So where, where I would love to get for you is to be healed so that you do set these things, but it's for you. And it's because you love yourself so much that you want to set these boundaries. You want to stop people pleasing. You want to stop overgiving because you love yourself too much and you want to protect your energy rather than being like, um, no, you can't do that to me anymore. If that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense to you guys. But like, no, you can't do that to me anymore. So I'm going to set these boundaries. I'm going to stop overgiving. I'm going to say no all the time. And that's coming from a place of... Um, I would say like resentment and anger. So we don't want that either because that's no good for you. So what you do want is you want to come back and you want to release the energy. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, because a lot of people don't understand what I'm talking about this because they've never heard of it before. And I was the same person when I was healing from my narcissistic marriage. I was the same person as to never heard about an energy healer, didn't even know what it was. Um, but I was so devastated that I was willing to try anything. So I went to an energy healer and it was the only thing that started making me feel better, um, even after two years of therapy. So we can work with our mind, but if we don't release the energy from the past, that's going to stick with us. And that energy is what attracts that person. Because again, you might want to set those boundaries, right? But their energy is like, oh, I feel bad. Like they overstepped my boundary. Now, what do I do? I feel bad. I can't say that. Like I can't force them. Then they're going to leave me. And then we have abandonment issues. And there's so many things that go along with that. So we have to heal from before. Okay. And this is when we go back to childhood. So your energy can start, keep attracting these people into your life because as much of the stuff you can do on your mind, um, you've got to release the energy because the energy is stuck in your energy field from places that you've been through before, situations, events, traumas that you've been through before. So say, for instance, if your father left when you were a child, you might have abandonment issues. Now, you might know that logically. I know. I know that, Danielle. Hello. <laughs> but the problem is, is that your energy is stuck around that time when he left, no matter how young you were. Um, I've worked with women who we've released energy from the womb because their mother was so anxiety driven or so depressed that they kept that energy from that moment. So there's so much energy work that you need to do around the past so that your energy kind of releases and refreshes. So then you can really start to attract the healthy relationships into your life. Because like I said, energy attracts energy. Vibration attracts the same vibration. This is when you're trying to manifest. It's like if your vibration isn't at a good level, then it's hard for you to manifest because it's hard for you to even believe because the energy is still trapped from back then. So energy, your energy is so important in order to let go of what has happened in the past. This is, and I'll say this real quick, because I know there's a lot of things in this video, but if you ever heard of triggers, right? If you see, if you broke up with someone that was driving um, a blue car, like say, um, we'll just say like a blue pickup truck. And every time you're out on the road and you see kind of the same exact car, it triggers you and emotions might come up. These thoughts might come up. Anxiety might come up. And that's because you have energy in your energy field that have been stuck there since that happened, that breakup happened. And now every time you're reminded of it, it comes up. And what do we do as humans? We push it back down and then it will come up again and we push it back down. But now it's time for you to let it up and let it out. All right. So that is my advice for you. Those are the six reasons why I think that you keep attracting narcissistic people into your life. So I hope that resonates with me, with, with you. <laughs> and if you're with me, I guess, um, and you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up for me. Let me know that you like this. Um, also, let me know in the comments if it made sense to you. If you have other questions around it, I will be in there answering some questions. Um, and also make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I do have three spots this week opened up for um, a consultation with me if you want to learn more about my From Pain to Power mentorship, which is the program that I do bring through women um, to really heal from codependency. And it's all energy healing. It's, it's re really reprogramming your mind. And it's also about releasing the energy from the past. So if that really resonates with what I said to, if it resonated with you with what I said today, um, you definitely want to jump on that. You can find out if you're a good fit for that call down below in the description box. All right. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. Much love to you and I'll see you soon. Bye.